Hello guys, uh, in this lecture I'm going to go over some uh, miscellaneous stuff uh, regarding you know, mechanical design and these stuff are not really part of your final exam. So I'm just you know, doing this lecture to go over these stuff uh, for your own information and for your own experience that you may be, able, that you may be interested in applying these uh, to uh, mechanical systems. Um, uh, and mainly in like you know the design and the real manufacturing of mechanical systems. So um, you know uh, let's start by going over you know fasteners. Uh, what we discussed earlier, obviously. So we've discussed bolts and we've discussed rivets, and um, and the rivets are you know obviously used to connect uh, like let's say two plates together. Um, you could mount them in single shear or in double shearing. In the case of a single shear, we are pretty familiar right now. You are going to have a single uh, force and then uh, you're going to have this uh, shear stress applied on it. In the case of the double shearing uh, configuration, uh, you will have, uh, have the force basically applied on either end and then that is going to be your shear stress. Uh, sometimes basically if the rivet is mounted on a plate like that, uh, when you essentially apply a force, you would basically create a bending moment actually on this part. And the bending moment is going to be the force that you apply multiplied by half uh, the grip lengths, right? So that is your grip. So half of it is going to be, you know, the thickness of a, of a single plate. And then you can find the stress applied on, on this part of this configuration of the rivet. Uh, we have also discussed uh, in the case where you have a plate and you may have a rivet on the inside, you would develop a bearing stress on the rivet and also the plate, and then you are going to have axial stresses on the plate on these two ends. Um, now let us discuss uh, how you can, for example, connect a shaft to a sprocket, uh, where here, for example, the sprocket is driving a chain. Uh, one of the things that people use are us usually set screws, and set screws come in different configurations. Basically, all what you do is you drill a hole in um, in the the bore, basically, right, uh, or the flange that is driving your gear or your or your sprocket, and you thread this portion, right, thread or you tap it, right, uh, and uh, basically. The shaft is going to go on the inside and when you put the set screw over here and then you tighten it you are going to apply a compression force on the shaft and then that is one way to basically retain the shaft inside this flange uh, there are different designs of uh, set screws one of you know the most popular one is basically the one that has a pointy edge and then by this is a very hardened steel and then when you tighten this up you can actually make a small dent in the shaft and then this will prevent uh, the shaft from slipping uh, on um, on the board. Different designs, so for example, uh, what some people could also do is you could actually put a hole in the shaft and by tightening by that, uh, uh, that uh, set screw basically, you would force the set screw or a portion of the set screw to actually penetrate inside the shaft. And now basically you will hold the shaft by the shear stress that is developed on the double pin. And uh, this here, basically, you see this uh, basically dashed line that represents the fact that you could actually have a, an Allen key here to drive the set screws. Uh, some other ways uh, of connecting uh, shafts or plates are double pins, and these are pretty much you know basic pins, and you can use these usually for precision instrumentation where you have a you know you have two plates, or uh, you can use it in the case of um, of uh, the flange and the shaft application. In that case, basically what you wanna do is uh, you wanna get the dimension of your double pin and uh, you are going to create a transition fit between the double pin and the bore and the shaft. And essentially you tap or you basically push the double pin using a hammer, hammer head like in this case. So the hammer head basically, this would be like a plastic head that wouldn't basically damage or bend the pin. And in this situation here, you are basically connecting this outer shaft to the inner shaft using this double pin. And basically just, you know, push it and then until it's here. And then when you basically, uh, now you are connecting two shafts together uh, in a very precise manner. And then again here, uh, your limitation is gonna be the shear stress that would uh, basically develop over here, right? So we have this portion and then this portion are going to be under a shear stress. And then obviously you would also actually have a bending stress, right? 
uh, on this point, for example, and on this point, depending on the uh, rotation direction. All right, uh, so in addition to double pins, uh, there are also uh, keyways, and keyways are also used to connect uh, two shafts together. And the keyway basically it looks like a rectangle, and then it, this is actually a, a longitudinal rectangle that is basically pushed all the way through. And by doing that, basically you can actually have more surface area than in the case of using the double pin as we saw in the previous configuration. So in this configuration, you can actually develop a lot more uh, torque. Uh, capability to be transmitted between the shaft and then that shaft. Uh, the circular one and then these types are rarely used. Uh, mainly keyways are basically rectangular. And how the key, how you should put the keyway? So basically, you would put a slot on the shaft. So you put uh, that uh, shaft on, uh, you know, on the milling machine or the Bridgeport machine, and then basically you would drive an end mill along the shaft. And by doing that, basically you have you know the slot on the shaft and on the board basically you are going to there is a particular machine that actually make this portion on the board and now basically you can put the board on the shaft and you slide the keyway on here and you slide all the way to the shaft and by doing that basically now you are putting this element between you know the board and the shaft the forces on the keyway would look like that basically uh, as a result of let's say the torque is like that here right you are going to be applying that force over here on that pin all right and then you are going to be so that so that area is like this but now it is has a lot of depths basically and then uh, you know bearing stresses as we know are you know very small compared to you know shear or bending stresses so that is why keyways are usually the go-to solution for transmitting large torques between two shots uh, now, obviously, if you don't want to, you know, do any machining on your parts, the easiest way for connecting two shafts are using couplers. And this is a generic coupler. Uh, when you buy the coupler, basically, you will specify the inner diameter on this end and then the inner diameter on the other end. So let's say you have a quarter inch shaft and you would like to get connect this quarter inch shaft to a one inch shaft. So you go online and then you can get that particular shaft. Uh, some shafts will basically allow some, uh, you know, flexibility or some misalignments between the shafts, which is this guy. So this guy will actually allow some misalignment between the input and the output shaft. But the cost for this is obviously it's more expensive. And the other cost for this is actually backlash. And in many, you know, precision applications, you actually don't want to have any backlash. Uh, so you want to revert basically to use this, you know, generic, uh, generic, uh, a coupler which is this guy and also one more drawback for uh, for uh, this guy is basically uh, for you know the one that allow misalignments is actually in addition to backlash it actually has low stiffness and those of you later who you know choose or who get into you know building or fabricating machines uh, you will realize that stiffness is a very important characteristics in, in machines that would ultimately later on lead to you know vibration and then uh, it would reduce your machine life. So these actually have low stiffness, and as a result of the low stiffness, you can have you know low natural frequencies in your application, and then you're you're going to have vibrations, and that would basically uh, damage your your machine. Um, uh, so this guy, right? Like I mentioned, uh, this guy right there, it, it you know uh, it supports large torques, right? But the problem here, we said it has backlash, right? Uh, it has backlash and it has um, it has a, a low stiffness. This guy right here, uh, this coupler, um, essentially it has no backlash, but it has a very low stiffness, right? Uh, and in addition to you know, so essentially backlash here is manifested as from stiffness, right? So if you have some deflection between the two ends, basically you would uh, you would have uh, uh, you would basically it gives you the so low stiffness give you the same effect as backlash or play between the two shafts and the other issue also is this one or the, the advantage of this one is basically it has a very high degree of flexibility between the misalignments of the two shafts so here you could have a lot of misalignments in your you know from where the two shafts are coming in because usually the two shafts are coming from two different uh, uh, two different references basically on your on your machine 
and this guy would allow you a lot of flexibility on your uh, on the shafts uh, the last one basically this guy has a rubber part on here and the rubber also has a low stiffness but at the same time it actually gives you the same functionality as uh, the one that is on the left and uh, it allows you to transmit the torque and uh, at the same time uh, it allows you to have some flexible some misalignments between the two shafts uh, but the stiffness here is actually used to absorb impact between you know the the outside shaft and then the shaft that is connected to the motor so having actually a flexibility or this rubber rubber part will uh, reduce the vibration or basically it would reduce the impact that is coming from the outer shaft to the inner shaft right so each one of these is basically suitable for an application right the cheapest one obviously like i said is going to be the, the most rigid one okay so uh, so some applications for these couplers uh, so uh, sometimes in actually in aerospace applications you may have to transmit you know very high torques and these torques basically they would have you know spikes in them meaning they would have impact into them and these uh, they would use basically rubber pieces or rubber parts between the two points to basically absorb that vibration right but the cost of absorbing vibration is actually creating a a low natural frequency on your system and that low natural frequency may be excited if you are running at its natural frequency basically and then you are going to be basically exciting these vibrations as opposed to basically reducing impacts right so if a single impact is coming alone like basically a low frequency impact so an impact coming you know maybe five to six seconds and another impact is coming then this would actually be good right but if the impact is essentially repetitive or oscillatory then that impact could actually excite the natural frequencies of that system and then it would create problems all right now in the case of very large torques to be transmitted like such as in your engine right or you know uh, uh, between engine and the torque converter right where you have very large torques that are delivered by the engine over to the transmission you actually use a spline shaft so this is similar to uh, the key shaft that i mentioned earlier but here you have spline shaft and uh, essentially of having one key basically have multiple keyways right so these are usually used for significant significant amount of torques uh, applications okay and this is what i just mentioned so this is a spline shaft basically so this will allow you to transmit uh, a very large torque. and then this is the keyway that i mentioned earlier okay uh retaining rings uh you know i'm pretty sure you guys you know some of you who had you know some interest in you know opening up mechanical systems uh the retaining ring is used to prevent for example a pin right or a bearing from you know falling off as a result of some forces which are uh, applied on your part okay uh, so uh, now this is the lecture that we had already covered so let me just stop this